I'm Leah Lane, an award-winning travel writer and author of Places I Remember, Tales, Truths, Delights from 100 Countries. On this podcast, we share conversations with travelers about fascinating destinations and memorable experiences around the world. Colombia is called the gateway to South America because it sits in the northwestern part of the continent where South America connects with Central and North America. It's the fifth largest country in Latin America and home to the world's second largest population of Spanish-speaking people. It's the only country in South America that has coastlines on the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. Colombia was originally inhabited by indigenous tribes. In 1499, the Spanish arrived and colonized the area, calling it New Granada. The official name of Colombia is derived from the last name of explorer Christopher Columbus. Colombia is on the equator, which means the sun rises and sets at the same time all year round and the season stays the same, unlike almost any other country in the world. There are just the dry seasons from December to January and July to August, and the rainy seasons from April to May and October to November. Our guests, Carlos Boggio and Ana Maria Matalana, are married. They're Mr. and Mrs. Carlos Boggio, and they are Colombians and spend part of their year in the country that they love. Welcome, Carlos and Ana Maria, to Places I Remember. Thank you, Leah. Great to be here. Thank you, Leah. Welcome. Thank you. Well, one of the first things you notice when you arrive in Colombia is the vitality that pulses throughout the country. Music is in the streets, there's energy. Why do you think this is so? Colombia has been a, a mixture of so many cultures, Spanish, the African culture, the indigenous culture, and uh, we've all been mixed together in a tropical environment. If you just travel around, you can see our nature. It's also vibrant. The vegetation, the, the animals, the birds, everything is colorful. Everything excites and it kind of goes well with the music and the vitality of, of our people. Music festivals and we in our culture, we like to, to dance. We like to since we are little, we are immersed in all this music and carnivals, which bring us happiness. You certainly are immersed in it. I know I've been there a couple of times and have enjoyed the carnivals and the, the festivals very much. I think age seems to be valued in Colombia, too. I noticed that elders seem to be deeply respected throughout the country, which I really appreciated. You mentioned the biodiversity. I think that Colombia has the highest rate of species by area, as well as the largest number of species that are found naturally anywhere else. I looked it up. When you go, you can't help but notice the gorgeous birds, the animals, the gorgeous lush jungles. What do you think are some of the most beautiful natural areas that you visited? Well, as you say, Colombia has has everything from the snow-covered peaks up in the in the Alps to the jungles of the Amazon uh, to the jungles on the Pacific Ocean to the beautiful beaches of the Caribbean, and basically everything in between. The nicest uh, things to enjoy in Colombia is the outdoors, is uh, traveling from city to city or town to town, even uh, especially by car, where you get to enjoy this changing geography, which is incredible. Yeah, have you seen Cano Cristales, the river? I read about that. Have you seen it, Carlos? Yeah, we have. We went to Cano Cristales about 10 years ago. It was still kind of untapped. It's absolutely beautiful. When we went, we had to fly there because it's in a very remote part of Colombia. Yes, it's it's amazing. I think the Instagrammers are going to love it because the riverbed changes color between yellow, green, blue, black, and red. And that's something that you can't find many places. So that's one of the special little secrets that we're discovering as I was researching. I haven't seen it yet. I have been to Tayrona National Park in northern Colombia, which is a beautiful palm-shaded, lagoon-filled rainforest, very rich in biodiversity. One of my favorites, it's close uh, to Santa Marta, my mother's hometown. It's uh, the highest peak in Colombia is uh, the Sierra Nevada of Santa Marta, which is right off the Caribbean. So it's it's kind of the whole Colombian miniature because you have all these altitudes and there you can go from the beaches, different expeditions. The most comfortable you can do in a helicopter, which will take you to the abandoned uh, sites of the pre-Columbian cultures. But you can also do it walking. It's, uh, I think, a three-day hike from the bottom, or you can stay at the beaches, which are absolutely fabulous. The the ocean is usually has big waves, so you have to be a very good swimmer. Or a surfer? 
Or surfer, yeah. Haven't seen many of those, but it's big, big waves and uh it's a little bit dangerous. So there's yeah. red cars, so they don't suggest to do that. Yeah. Well, when you talk about this, it reminds me of the beautiful animation in Canto, which was based in, in Colombia, which shows you the beauty. If you if anyone has seen that, it's it it just gives you a feeling for the for the great beauty of Colombia. Let's talk about some of the major Colombian cities. Let's start with Bogota. What's not to miss there? It's the capital. It's 9 million people or more. Very vibrant. So tell me a little bit. I like about Bogota. I'm from Bogota. And Carlos is from Bogota too. I really loved the museums. We do have the museum, the Museo del Oro, which is the gold museum, which we find a lot of pieces made of gold of our cultures, of the Incas, of our indigenous people. And it's amazing how many pieces you can find there, forms and the shapes, which I haven't seen anywhere in other museums. You can see the different cultures in South America. There are also a little bit about the Incas and also a little bit about other, other indigenous cultures. I also like the museo, the, the Botero Museum, which is small, but it's a, it was his private collection that he yes. Botero, of course, is the famous artist who loved to sculpt and paint very large folks, which is very fun to watch. He's very popular. I, I know. I think he passed away recently. Yeah. yeah. So you find pieces for other artists around the world. It's small. It's a small museum, and you enjoy it a lot. La Candelaria, which is like the neighborhood in the center of Bogota. I think it's beautiful, the colorful streets and, and restaurants and little places there are nice. La Plaza de Bolívar, the center square of the downtown where the sculpture of Bolívar is. I like it a lot. I should add that Bogota is very high. It's above 8,000 feet. So you be aware of it. It's extremely beautiful, surrounded by mountains well worth a visit. The second most well-known city in Colombia, I would say, is Cartagena de Indias. It's a port city on the shores of the Caribbean in the Northwest. It's stunning. It's one of the most beautiful, well-preserved cities in the Americas. And during the Spanish colonial period, it had a key role in the expansion of the Spanish Empire. And it was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's so much fun. Tell us a little bit about it. Cartagena is out of, uh, for me, it's out of uh, pirate stories and fairy tales. It's it's still very intact. Uh, the old walls uh, overlooking the, the ocean. There's a, a humongous port called uh, San Felipe, which was made by the Spanish precisely to protect Cartagena. It was the place where the Spaniards would concentrate the riches they would find in the Americas. And from there, they would ship back to the old continent. So it was basically a huge safe. It was constantly attacked by pirates and other people wanting to grab at the riches. And most of that is still there. You have you have the vibes in the old streets. Uh, you're always in between walls, these huge walls overlooking the ocean. There's fantastic boutique hotels where you can stay in the old city. That's my favorite places. There's bigger resorts on the outside and on the beaches. But uh, really, if you want to get the feeling of Cartagena, Try to get inside the old uh, the old city. It's fantastic to walk during the day, during the night. It's full of cafes and, and great restaurants. It's really something. And when you get bored of all that, you can take a boat and go out to the islands. And there's a lot to do there in terms of scuba diving, swimming, beautiful beaches, a lot to do. The only thing, the, the actual beaches in Cartagena are nice, but they're not spectacular. If you want to go to spectacular beaches, you have to take a one-hour boat ride out to the islands. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> kind of perfect, actually. I know the Rosario Islands are near there, and that's one of the 46 national parks of Colombia. Cartagena right now is hot, as we say. It's Everybody wants to go there, and you can see why from your description. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Down the coast is Barranquilla, which is Colombia's second largest city. It's a bustling seaport on the Atlantic, and it has an enormous carnival, the second largest in the world after Rio. I was lucky enough to attend it one year. Wow. There were four days of festivities. There was music all day long, all night long. There were parades and, and parties, and it was just fabulous. Have you been? Have you been yet? Yes, we have been several times. For me, it's, it is the marathon of parties. 
You have to pace yourself to survive them. They're four days long and they're very well planned out. They're very well organized. You can choose if you want to be part of the parade and, and, and it can be arranged that you dress up and, and dance down the streets or you can decide to be an observer on the side stands and uh, there's fantastic places where you can watch, where you have a great service, uh, you get food, you get drinks while you watch it all go by. As I say, every day has its special event. Every night has its special party. You have to pace yourself or you're not going to make it for the four days. You think it's going to be a little messy. It's going to be a, a lot of crazy people. And actually, no, I was impressed and happy to see how organized it is, how, how people really dance and how if you don't dance as an spectator, you it's organized. You can you can find a, a place to to that you sit and to watch all the dances and also in the parties. I remember I was sprayed by a water pistol, which was a lot of fun. That was the worst thing that happened to me. And I got a little flower on me. People were throwing flower, not flowers, flower. And I got a little bit. But it was fun. We all loved it. The flower battle is one of the big parades. That's with the beautiful flowers. And also King Momo. He's the the mascot. How would you describe him? There's deep traditions. Uh, there's characters like uh, King Momo, Kimono Kuk. Uh, they all have their, their historic importance in the carnival. King of the carnival, he resurrects every year. And uh, and the Tuesday, which for us is Mardi Gras, he dies. Uh, so an anecdote, when I started working in Barranquilla, I worked in Barranquilla several years was a Tuesday, which is actually a working day, but not for the people in Barranquilla. When I showed up to work, everybody told me they were in the funeral. And I was like, who died? And everyone said, oh, this is the funeral of uh, Jose Lito Carnaval. And it's 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 the death of the carnival. And, and the last day of those four days, it's a make-believe huge funeral where they're burying uh, Jose Lito Carnaval. If you have seen Shakira dance, you can understand a little how yeah, Shakira, yes. yes, because the way she moved, the way yes. they all, all her, her music has inside, like the the music of of the carnival. And in, in Barranquilla, since you are little, since you are three, four years old, they teach you how to dance. They do dances, group dances with kids. So Shakira is. You can see a lot of Barranquilla in Shakira. Yeah, Shakira moves her hips to cumbia. I know that's the famous <laughs> music there, and. Think about Barranquilla. It has it has a, a, a culture from from around the world. Well, I want to take you over to the Pacific side to Cali, which is another big city. And since we're talking about music, that's known for its salsa music and its rumba music. And I think uh, you know it's just good to mention that there's a big city on the other side of the country as well. And there, uh, you're very close to the Pacific, so you can go there for the beaches. And um, there's a wonderful zoo that is dedicated to the environment and uh, have you have you been to Cali much or I've been to Cali a long time ago and Cali it has like an amazing landscape it's beautiful all the the, the, the mountains the flowers the food the food is is great around Cali is all the sugarcane plantations from the sugarcane we they make one of the most known beverages in Colombia which is aguardiente which is distilled from sugarcane called aguardiente which produces to fire water a like very strong drink which accompanies a lot of our dancing and our festivities very uh -huh. well now i know the secret there it is okay well one of my favorite colombian cities is medellin and this is the city of eternal spring it's called that because it's got wonderful temperature all the year it was once infamous for dangerous gangs but it has been transformed and today, it's a very, very popular place to go, not only for its beauty. And I know it has Botero there because I walked around a park where there were about 20 Boteros outside and there was a museum. So there's art and all. But there are also fantastic examples of urban renewal. There's a famous metro cable that goes up. You take an escalator and then you go up the mountain. It's a wonderful view of the city. And it's a, it's really changed many of those barrios and and help the neighborhoods in the area. It's a wonderful rehabilitation of the city. But the thing I love about Medellin the most are, are the festivals. I went in December 
for the Festival of Light, for the beautiful Christmas lights. They're well known throughout the world. It was exceptionally beautiful. There were all kinds of festivities around that. Beautiful time to go. The other time I would go, I would suggest, is in August for the floral parade. Tell me about that. Well, the flower festival is in August, as you said. Colombia is a very, as Carlos said at the beginning, colorful country. You have a lot of flowers. So there we expose all types of flowers around Colombia. Remember that Medellin is inside all the, the la zona cafetera, the coffee area. So there's inside of all those coffee mountains, there's a lot of, of flowers. So uh, it's it's very nice. It's beautiful. And I think when you go to the florist, uh, the Feria de las Flores, as they call it, there's also something called the Chiva Carnival there. And the Chivas are traditional open-sided buses and people paint them up. And when I was there, there were about 80 of them in a row with all different colors and names. And it was so much fun. There were many things around the flowers, not just the flowers. It, I know all year people work to set this beautiful festival up. So I really recommend it very highly. And also, as you mentioned, the day trips outside of Medellin are, are gorgeous because you go, you can go up to a coffee plantation and you can go to beautiful lakes. And There's it's, Guatapé, Guatapé. Yeah, yes. It's a beautiful lake. Absolutely. That, that you can go and there's a lot of beautiful boutique hotels, hotels, you can kayak, you can ski, you can water ski in the lake. For, for me, one of the things not to miss in, in that area and even Armenia and Pereira is the coffee area. It's called La Zona Cafetera. The coffee farms are absolutely beautiful. They remind me very different, but kind of what uh, vineyards look like, how they, they're farming all this coffee underneath uh, the shade of these beautiful trees. These hills lined up with coffee plants are absolutely fabulous. There you can try to, to find um, a farm or somewhere where you can stay. It's absolutely gorgeous. And if you like coffee and you like trying it, the different varieties, well, it's worth it. You go through all the plantations in, in horses and it's beautiful. How do you drink your coffee? I know tinto is the popular way. What does that mean? It's not espresso. It's just like an American it's, coffee. It's black American coffee. Percolated yeah. coffee, not very strong. In a very little cup. <laughs> it's because it's yeah. strong. Yeah, it's a delicious coffee. There's also a drink called Lulada, mix of lime juice and fruit and sugar, and it was delicious. How about the food? I know I've had empanadas. We have arepas, which, for example, in Medellin, we have la arepa paisa, which is a, like a tortilla with grated cheese on top. Then if you go to Bogota, you have a different type of arepa, which is like filled with cheese, more thick, and with butter. So, but And mm. then if you go to the coast, to, to Barranquilla, uh, you get the fried arepa, arepa huevo, which you yeah. put egg inside, like fried. Yeah, which I love arepa. I love the classic arepa, the cornmeal cake with the cheese. It's just delicious. You can find it in many places in Miami where I live. I had lechona, which is pork roast. It was delicious. Our meats are fantastic. Our steaks are great. Uh, you went over in close to Bogota. There is a very, very famous restaurant called Andres Carna de Res, and their speciality is steak. It's a restaurant uh, which was started by this gentleman whose name is Andres, and it's kind of his work of art. So he, he started very small and he kept on adding things and adding things, and it's grown to a restaurant which fits over, I think, 5,000 people. And it's just the food is wonderful. You can try all types of food from Colombia. You can stay all night if you want and have breakfast there, too. It's really one of the top experiences in Colombia. Now, the original one is outside of Bogota in a town called Chia. Now there's one in Bogota, and they're making them. There's one in Cartagena as well. It's kind of spreading around. But if you can, it's worth going to the original Andres in Chia. In terms of food, one very different food you can have is from Ana Maria's area. It's uh, ants. What? They <laughs> it's ants, yeah. They they a certain time of year, there's very big ants come out and they grab them, and they take the bottom of the ant out. They're called the butsy ants, armigas culonas, and they stir fry them, and they're actually pretty good. You should try them. <laughs> next time, next time, definitely. Because Colombia is the third largest exporter of coffee, lots of people buy coffee, but even better. You have more emeralds than any other country, and that's my favorite 
of all gems. Tell us about emeralds and Colombia. Where would you shop to get a really, you know, you want to get a real one? And if you go to Bogota, there's a, a mall, shopping mall, El Andino, where you, there you can find jewelry stores that you can you can buy it. And I think those are the more fair places to go to yeah. shopping mall. There's... You want to be careful. Yes, I know. I went there. I think if, if you know your gems and you can tell a real from a fake, you can maybe get good deals on the streets. Let's put it that way. But, yeah, <laughs> but, but you might be able to end up with a piece of glass. Yeah, I would say be and, careful. Because I'd like to uh, emphasize, you don't have to get a big one. You can get a teeny little one, but it's from Colombia. It's real. It's it's beautiful. So we have a lot of designers, like uh, clothes designers, young clothes designers in Barranquilla, in Medellin, in Bogota. It's just beautiful. The clothes that you find there, everything. It's 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 beautiful. So I also suggest the shopping part in all those those three cities. The boutiques, they are amazing. Absolutely. What a country. Okay. Well, the name of the podcast is Places I Remember. So would you either share one memory or give me two memories, a personal memory of your beautiful country? Once I was with my father going up in in, in a mule, because one of the places you can go, you can go up in, in mules. Where did you go up? To Arrecife, which is like a small, a, a small beach, but you have to go either by boat or walking or by mule. And it's inside the Parque, Ta the Parque Tairona. And we were going up with mules and I pulled my father got kicked by a mule. Okay. By your mule? By your mule? <laughs> yes. So I remember that as, 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 as something but funny, but, but that uh, it was a little different. A little different. How about you, Carlos? Well, one of my favorite places on the outsides of Bogota is Sipaquira. It's about an hour to two hours, depending on traffic from Bogota. And in Sipaquira, they have wonderful, they, it was an original place where they mined salt underground. So they're very large tunnels mined underground. And they built uh, what is called the Salt Cathedral underground. So you walk down these tunnels, uh, first they're, uh, they're small, and then it opens up to this huge cathedral under the earth, and it's, it's absolutely spectacular. In this cathedral, there are some angels and, uh, and a major, which is sculpted by an Italian artist, which was a good friend of my father. When my father first immigrated to Colombia, his roommate, or he shared an apartment with this artist, which had been contracted by the Colombian government to do an important monument in Bogota. And so he left uh, these, uh, these sculptures in the, in the Salt Cathedral, which are absolutely beautiful. This gentleman also is very famous because he sculpted the Holy Door of the Vatican in Rome. Oh, my goodness. Uh, while he was my father's roommate, he, he, he made a, a small bronze angel which is similar to the angels in the cathedral. I keep it home and it's very special to me. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Anna Maria Matalana and Carlos Boggio, who are married and who share the delights with us of their beautiful country, Colombia. It is worth a visit, as you can tell. Thank you so much for sharing. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to our award-winning podcast. We've recorded over 100 episodes of Places I Remember, so follow us on any podcast app. And new monthly episodes are also on YouTube with gorgeous video. My book, Places I Remember, is available in print and Kindle, and I read the audio version. Follow my travel writing at Forbes.com. Contact me at the links in the show notes or on my website, PlacesIRememberLealane.com, and keep making your own travel memories.